Investing is a process. It's a process that includes sorting, filtering, selecting, tracking, monitoring, and of course trading. And in the middle of all this is the work one needs to put in in order to present a compelling argument on why one should or should not invest in a particular opportunity. This presentation is formally called an investment thesis, which simply speaking is a written analysis that lays out the case for why a stock, sector, situation or index might generate a compelling return. It's a tool that's not used by many, but if you ask an experienced and successful investor, then they will tell you that an investment thesis is one of the most effective components of their investing practice that not only keeps them focused, but also keeps them intellectually honest. And so in this video, we shall understand how anyone can create an investment thesis and use it smartly to become a better investor. Let's begin. An investment thesis focuses on the why, that is why you believe that a particular investment will deliver an attractive return and in asking so, it acts as a guide to determine your next step. Now, an investment thesis does not need to be long for it to be effective. In fact, the thesis just needs to contain the most important factors driving your decision to invest in a particular opportunity. In effect, there are only five steps or guiding principles to writing a thesis. The first step is to determine and outline the catalyst driving your investment thesis. Something like, is there a trend that's showing up like what we are now seeing with electric vehicles or the commodity super cycle? Or are there societal changes like more companies using gig workers or hybrid working models to operate, etc. These trends and shifts can be regulatory, social, cultural, environmental, economic, disruptive, technological, short-term, long-term, etc. But remember, at this stage, you are only looking at the big moving parts. Once we have a big play buildup, we then assess how the investment or company is positioned within the catalyst. This typically includes things like market sizing, that is, is a particular industry worth pursuing, the company standing within the industry, competitive advantages, growth runways, business segments, upside potentials, valuation, does it align with your portfolio construct and investment strategy, etc. The output one looks for here are some key drivers and metrics which are a part of your wider analysis and projections. In other words, why does your investment look promising when allocating any form of capital towards this opportunity? The third step is to consider the biggest risks that the business faces. These risks can be external ones like regulatory, supply of raw materials, logistical challenges, competitors, lawsuits, recessions, etc. Or it can be more internal such as too much leverage, attrition of talent, weak execution skills, poor allocation of capital, compliance violations, etc. And while it's good to jot down everything that could negatively impact this investment, keep your focus on the top three risks when developing the thesis. And the final step in the investment thesis creation process is to write down one's expected return and the level of conviction you have in that investment to achieve that return. Assuming you are looking at multiple proposals, this step will help you select the investment that is likely to give you the highest risk adjusted return on a probabilistic basis. So to put it all together, creating an investment thesis is not very difficult if one follows these four steps in its entirety. Yes, it does take time, it requires a lot of reading, but as the Spartans said centuries ago, he who sweats more in training bleeds less in war. But having said this, here are a couple of useful tips which can make this task a lot easier and a lot more effective. The first tip is to not be very metric driven when developing the investment thesis. What I mean by this is that there has to be a balance in terms of the strategic, financial and operational parameters when developing the thesis. Or as the successful value investor Martin Whitman rightly concluded, based on my own experience, rarely do more than three or four variables really count. Everything else is noise. So keep the investment thesis to three or four simple bullet points to extract the maximum benefit out of it. A second tip to understand and imbibe is that the thesis creation process 
in itself is an iterative one which often gets incrementally improved over time. In that context, I would suggest that once you are done with writing a thesis using the four steps we have discussed, don't be in a hurry to release it. Instead, I recommend you keep it in your drawer for a minimum of one week and use that time to talk to ex-employees, suppliers, customers, vendors, etc. for different perspectives about the business which more often than not would enhance the quality of your original thesis. Let's walk through the investment thesis of a company we all know, Apple. Now this is just one thesis that I'm putting forward and as one can expect, each of us can have a different point of view, a different lens of viewing the company and the factors surrounding it. So as part of the research, one would need to understand Apple's competitive landscape, its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Uh, one would need to analyze the financial statements, talk to some ex-employees, vendors and customers, identify the competitive advantages, etc. Now once we are armed with this information or whatever we can find, it's time to write down the main points on why one should buy the Apple stock. So a simple buy case investment thesis for Apple may look something like this. And while 7 points is a bit too much, it does give us a clear idea on what makes Apple the formidable brand it is, why does it resonate with its users, the growth it offers, internal factors like its culture, execution skills, the product pipeline, and of course the financial justification of it. Now the first time one looks at it, these might seem like just words, but within every point are some key actionables that you as an analyst will need to continually track. For instance, when tracking the strength of the brand, one might want to examine things like the global ranking of the brand, the growth in its market share, the price elasticity of demand and the impact that deals and discounts have on product sales. So yes, developing a good well-rounded thesis does require some work and the more one digs in, the higher are the chances of uncovering the major risks that the company faces, which is also a key element of any investment thesis. In fact, one of the bigger advantages of researching, reviewing, tracking, writing and referring back to the thesis is that it keeps an investor honest and his or her emotions at bay when investing. For example, let's say some news comes in that Samsung is launching a new fancy smartphone next month. What happens next is expected and there's absolute pandemonium in Cupertino, California and on Wall Street where the Apple stock drops by 20%. There's noise here, noise there, people are even predicting the demise of Apple. But for a smart investor like you, the real question will be, is the investment thesis still intact? If I expand that a bit, the question is, what impact is Samsung's new smartphone likely to have on Apple's brand power, its ecosystem, its growth, its culture, product roster, etc. To put it differently, how likely is it that Samsung's new phone will take a big bite of the Apple? And if your answer to that question from an investment thesis perspective is a resounding no, then everything that's going on around you is just noise. And the more we develop the habit of constantly checking new information against our thesis, the more will we learn how to effectively filter out the noise which can do wonders to our investment process and success. Let's take another example and this time let's build an investment thesis around the cement sector and how one can use some parts of the thesis to identify the right companies to invest in. Now on a macro basis we know a lot about the cement industry. India is the world's second largest producer and consumer of cement. The industry is positively correlated to our country's GDP. It is expected to grow by 9 to 10% over the next four years. It's cyclical has seasonal demand, etc. A lot of this will be somewhere in the thesis, but the single point I want to focus on is this, undifferentiated commodity product with low stickiness. This phrase is another way of saying that the consumer or end user of cement is primarily concerned about one and only one thing, and that is the price of cement. Now, as expected, the price of cement depends on its cost, which effectively means that the lowest cost producer of cement is the one who decides the market price of cement. 
So essentially, cost competitiveness becomes a big part of the equation and will perhaps be the most important bullet point of your investment thesis. In fact, let's go a little deeper into this. Now, there are three main cost elements for the cement industry, which individually comprise 20 to 30 percent of the total cost. These three variables are the cost of raw materials, the cost of power and fuel, and the cost of transportation. The first one, the raw materials part, is centered around limestone, which means your ideal cement company should have a guaranteed access to limestone mines, and which is probably why cement companies are clustered around limestone reserves. The second cost element is power, and cement companies depend on a lot of power for producing heat, which is needed in the manufacturing process. Now, power generated from coal is cheaper than thermal, wind, or solar power, which is why it is used the most and why the price of cement is aligned to the cost of coal. Additionally, cement plants that have a captive power generation unit have lower costs, as captive power is a lot cheaper than grid electricity. And the third and final cost element revolves around transportation. You see, cement is a heavy commodity, and to sell it at a place that's far from the manufacturing center is never going to be a viable proposition, which is probably why there is almost zero competition in this sector when it comes to imports. And while the cement industry continues to innovate with clinkering, grinding, packaging, etc., the ideal maximum distance from plant to the consumption center should be within 300 kilometers for the operation to be cost effective. So there you have it, the three essential aspects that demand a large share of the cement industry investment thesis. And if you were to transform this thesis into a stock selection criteria, then what you are really looking for is a company that has the lowest cost of raw materials, the lowest cost of power, and the lowest transportation cost. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope you too can see what I am seeing. The construct of a well-researched investment thesis can hugely improve your investing decisions and make you a more successful investor. Unfortunately, most people don't do this because it's hard work, but if you're keen on improving your skills, I suggest you start with analyzing any stocks that you already own or are interested in building a position in. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them out in the comments box below and we'll try our best to answer them. Once again, thank you for your time. Do like this video, subscribe to our channel, and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful topic. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.